I, I hear the, the officers on the radio, oh, we got the Hispanic male in custody. And then um, I, I go to the, the scene where they had him by the bank and um, he was just there like laying motionless and there's cops around him clapping, like congratulating and laughing. So you, so you say you saw cops kind of celebrating? Yeah, yeah celebrating, yeah. Like what, like high-fiving? Yeah, high-fiving and laughing like, oh, you caught him. And, and this one officer in particular, like I'll never forget his face or what he looked like, but he said that you should have seen how funny it was, how his butt clenched when he tased him. somewhat of a mentor to me like he gave me a place to put my talent he was a, a really good friend he was a beautiful person um, and when I found out that this happened I, I couldn't believe it and I didn't know how to take it he was a cool cat he was awesome man he'd make jokes he was always like inspired by everything he wouldn't harm a fly he wouldn't hurt anyone pure positive kind and inspiring are the words most frequently used to describe israel hernandez a miami youth who was tasered and killed by miami beach police on tuesday according to his friends who were at the scene that night israel was in the process of inscribing a small amount of graffiti on an old abandoned building that already had marks scrawled all across it when police appeared on the scene cop comes gets out his car starts chasing israel israel tries to get on his board his board flips so he begins running. He runs up 71st Street, then back down. He disappears inside a building. They can't find him for about five minutes. Later, police were able to find and corner him, where he reportedly resisted arrest. The cops tased him, and what happened after that is a cruel reminder of what some police officers are capable of if we do not hold them accountable for their actions. And uh, the, he ran towards an abandoned building, and I didn't see anything after that. And then I went to go pick up the board, and then I stashed it somewhere. I, I hear the, the officers on the radio, oh, we, we got the Hispanic male in custody. And then um, I, I go to the, the scene where they had him by the bank and um, he was just there like laying motionless and there's cops around him clapping, like congratulating and laughing. They were high-fiving each other and they were just acting like it was nothing. And I actually heard like one of the cops saying, oh, you should have seen, you should have seen his asshole tighten up. You should have seen how he stiffened up when we tased him and stuff. like." He was tight. He was tight, boy. That's exactly what he was saying, you know. When they were kind of celebrating this, do you know if this was before, during, or like after he was dead? Like he, he, he Well, they told us he was dead as soon as we got there, and then they were celebrating, so obviously they knew he wasn't moving. He was unconscious. By the way, unconscious or dead, it's still wrong. Yeah. Laughing about it. We Are Changed spoke with Israel's girlfriend, who was in New York when she heard the news. Like, call me, and it's sort of thing, well, you just be like, good afternoon, how are you? Like, has this tragedy um, changed your views about the power that we give to law enforcement? I know I'm very angry, but I don't know. I know that the cops, what they did, they're going to have to live with that, and it's, it's their cost. And they, I know that they're probably feeling worse than anyone about this. Has this changed your perspective about law enforcement? Of course it has. They're gruesome out there. They're disgusting. They have a lot of nicknames, and the one that best suits them is just pigs. The police officers, that's the biggest gang in America. The gang in blue. They keep trying to blame it on drugs or blame it on weed, and there's zero deaths from marijuana, you know? They keep trying to say that there was something in his system or that he just collapsed. There's no way. He's in good health. He was 18 years old, skateboards from South Beach to Ball Harbor every day. There's no way he could have just stopped like that. I don't understand how you could high-five someone and watch someone on the floor die. And to, to me, that's heartbreaking to know that someone's so cruel that way. I shed a couple of tears, but like, I know it's like, tears aren't going to bring my friend back. You know, you just got to bring justice to this. This is wrong. You don't kill a young person who is, who is so, like, he wanted to do everything. He wanted to create a movement, a new shape of boards, a new art, a new form of art and everything like that. I don't understand how they had the nerve to tase him for so long and watch this young boy that just finished high school. He had, he had his whole life ahead of him. Like, he was so brilliant. He had all these ideas and these, these cops just took all that away from him. On Saturday, we're going to have a, a protest over here around 9 in the morning or 10 in the morning. We're going to be here. We're going to be protesting. And it's, we're gonna make we're gonna make his name live on, you know, because that's all he ever wanted is 
from what he told me is recognition. What do you think, if, if Israel had something to say about the situation, what do you think he would say about it? Like, how should people react to it? What should people do now? He was always one to say that, that we should stand up for what we believe in. So what we're doing right here is definitely what he would want to do, like a movement so that this never happens again. And he's going to be a change in history. He always wanted to make his mark, and he's going to make his mark this time. to talk Why about your depopulation plan. Why don't you get lost? Why should I get lost? It's you're serious. A sick person. Sick person. How am I sick? You're the one coming in. Mr. Rothschild, how are you doing, sir? Can you tell us what went on at the Bilderberg meeting this year? Sorry? Can you tell us what went on at the Bilderberg meeting this year? I didn't go there, actually, no. The Bilderberg? You weren't there? No. Not this year. What went on uh, last year? No, I wasn't there.